Hello and welcome to IR Thinker, where international affairs are discussed. I'm Martin Zubko. Today we're going to speak about the power structure in Russia. As we know, there is the war in Ukraine, there is a conflict in Gaza and Israel, and Russia is involved in many geopolitical dynamics. And the goal of this episode is to better understand how the power structure in Russia works, who is in power actually in Russia. My expert today is uh, Chris Monday. Hello, Chris. Hi. Chris Monday is Associate Professor um, at the Department of International Relations at Dongseo University, Busan in South Korea. His research focuses on Russia, North Korea, and other post-communist societies. Chris lived in Russia from 1996 to 2004. He also served in the Peace Corps in Turkana, Kenya, in Africa. Chris published in many international journals, for instance, Asian Survey, Russian History, Journal of Soviet and Post-Soviet Politics and Society, Russian Review, Ideology and Politics Journal, Belarus Kizborenik, Communist and Post-Communist Studies, Vaprosi Statistiki, Korean Slavic Review, and others. So I'm very happy that Chris accepted the invitation because he has not only academic experience of researching Russia, but also practical life experience, which is extremely useful, especially nowadays when the Western world and the East is separated in some way. And it's it's more and more difficult to get some information about Russia, to meet with Russian colleagues because of different obstacles that we face. So let's speak about the power structure in Russia. And my first question is, how is the Russian power structure designed to balance the interests of political, military and economic elites? Uh, What's your understanding of the power structure of Russia? That's a that's a great question. It's a very complex question. And uh, frankly, we we don't have the answer. Uh, you know, that I, I think if someone is looking for a Nobel Prize, uh, that, that's exactly what we need is, is what what kind of uh, society, what kind of uh, economic structure do, does Russia have? Uh, same thing with China. I mean, we just we don't have a good model. We don't have a good model of, of what these uh, countries are. And so uh, with Russia, I mean, we, we actually uh, we have empirical proof of uh, that it, it's it's something different that our models aren't working. Uh, so, for example, uh, we know that the Leipzig test that, uh, you know, as as uh, people get richer, you should have uh, you should have democracy. Right. Uh, and and when you go to Russia, say, say uh, 10 years ago, uh, you know, people people were better off there. They, were, they live comfortable. Most most Russians live the comfortable uh, lifestyle. And yet there, there was no uh, democracy. There was no there is no uh, there, there's really no politics going on. And in fact, we see, uh, you know, the politics, uh, it, it, again, it's unique is uh, in the 90s. You had some kind of democratic politics. You know, we can debate how much what a kind of a genuine democracy it was. But there, well, there was a democracy. And, and now now there isn't. Right. So so. Uh, uh, it, that that's not clear. Uh, you know, of course, there, there's uh, Thomas Friedman said, uh, you know, two countries with the McDonald's would never fight one another. Well, they have. Um, and then if we take a look at the economics, uh, we see we, again that this, our models are are not uh, a given good uh, good predictions. Are not not giving us a way a way to influence Russia. And we see this with the sanctions, 2014. They said, you know, well, we, we can target the elites, we can force the elites to uh, to to change their decision. Uh, you know, the so-called selectorate theory of politics, uh, where the elites would, you know, they see that we'd cut off their incomes and, and they'd uh, dump Putin. But th- that hasn't happened. If anything, the, the sanctions, they, they've increased Putin's popularity. And so clearly uh, th- these models, uh, these models aren't aren't uh, aren't working. Uh, very well. Uh, and so uh, I'm a big fan. We, we just we have to look at Russian traditions, Russian history and go back to see what what is actually what what's what's different. Right. What, why? Why is why, why are Russian politics, the economy? Why? Why is it? Why is it different from the West? 
Uh, so if we look at the, the economy, the Oikus economy, uh, that was the household. Uh, Russia never never had that. There was a Vochina, the, the, the kind of patrimonial household. But of course, uh, as is well known in Russian history, this was replaced by the uh, the, the Pamestam, the, the the Pamestia system, where you had to serve, you had to serve to to keep your land. Uh, and 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 it's just this is embedded deep and deep in Russian culture that. That property is connected to loyalty and service. If you're not loyal, then your property gets taken. And we've seen this again and again in Russian history. We see this now, uh, and that's one reason why these elites uh, aren't aren't standing up. They, they face they face sanctions. They lost their companies. They can't travel, uh, and, and yet they're they're not they're not opposing Putin. This, this is this is a deep tradition, uh, and so. Uh, this uh you know we we have to when we look at the economic sphere we have to we have to see we have to uh <clears throat> we have to be cognizant of these 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 russian traditions the same thing uh, with the political sphere the polis polis uh, it's a city the city the city uh city entity uh westerners they're just uh, the city is in their heads where russia uh, never traditionally never had cities uh, we see Peter the Great. Uh, that's where our apartment is, Saint Petersburg. Uh, we see Pushkin and the Medny Sadnik. That was uh, the the. It, it's not a, a Western city. It's it, it's it's some it's something different. Maybe not better, or not worse, but it's definitely it's something different. And and so uh, you know our politics, city politics, the polis. Uh, it, we, Russia never had this. They had diff- different traditions. Uh, and then, of course, the military sphere. Uh, well, you know, the, uh, although uh, Russia uh, is certainly is fighting wars, has fought many wars. Its, its history is it's it's connected to war. Uh, the the military itself, uh, I'd say, has never really had an independent. There's never been an independent force. You know, the the, the czar was was the head of the army. Uh, and anytime we've seen a uh, general try to try to take power, uh, you know, Prigozhin, uh, it, it's never uh, it's never ended well, right? These these, these uh, Zhukov, right? Zhukov was uh, the big hero after World War II, and yet his political career just disappeared. Uh, Look at he split. Uh, the, the, we see we see that there's different different forces. Uh, for example, the the Akhrana, right? The, the secret police, and of course the KGB. Uh, they they had more uh, they had more power, uh, and so we we really we need to go back and rethink what kind of models, political, economic, military, what kind of models uh, we we can use to describe Russia, um, and and then. Um, <clears throat> And then there's the issue, of course, of the the famous the, the patrimonial thesis, Richard Pipes, that you know Russia well maybe it just didn't have any any didn't have institutions and and the leader just decides everything, uh, but but that doesn't all, that doesn't seem to be the case really either. Uh, we've seen, uh, for example, Lenin. There's the perfect example of someone who who despised politics. He didn't despise. He thought that was all nonsense, bourgeois nonsense. Uh, and of course, property, the, the economy, the, you know, that that had to go. Uh, and he wanted to remake uh, remake Russia. Is that he was the Volge, the leader, the, the typical leader uh, that that wanted to remake everything. And yet, of course, Lenin he soon found he had to, he had there were there were some kind of Russian traditions that he had to face. And uh, you know, soon he had to do the NEP. And and uh, of course, then you had Stalin and and has reintroduced some kind of. Uh, I don't know Russian mm-hmm. Russian way this this happened right and so the, okay. the, it's not true that there are just no no institutions whatsoever so so what are they what are they that mm-hmm. that's a big question uh, and then if we go uh, again other examples in the 1990s again where uh, you know okay the because Soviet systems collapsed and we just we can we can remake things so we had uh, Andrei Schleifer I think again one of uh, the most brilliant. Uh, Theorists of the new Russia, uh, his idea was, uh, you know, stated explicitly that we can create these these uh, conglomerates, that these 
these businesses that can stand up against the state, the Russian Chebol, the Chebol like in Korea, where you have the Chebol like Samsung, where you have the same thing in Russia, where you, where you make these, these entities kind of out of scratch uh, and they'll, they'll stand up to the state. As he said, well, we'll do the economy first and politics will follow, stated explicitly. Uh, you know, politics was just a sideshow. Uh, military is falling apart. Let's let's create these the, these uh, these conglomerates, and, and they'll and and this will this will form a a new kind of a stable state, right? And then uh, the the politics will follow, become democratic. Mm-hmm. Again, that didn't happen. That didn't happen, and, and you know now we're uh, we're back in the you know traditional. It, what, what exactly it is, it's hard to say, but it, it's definitely there. There is some kind of traditional Russian way of governance. Is it even possible to to form some concepts of power in Russia or, or to name them? Or this is sort of impossible task? Oh, that, well, that's the, that's a big question. That's that's the million dollar question. Uh, of course, there, there's uh, different schools. Uh, uh, again, there, there's this idea that that Russia is, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a no, the so-called normal country. Again, Andrei Schleifer and Treisman, that there's a famous article uh, that that Russia is is a is a, a developing country, a normal country like South Korea or Mexico it has corruption and violence and things. But but uh, it's Westerners that uh, that project uh, some some Orientalist type views, uh, exaggerating things. And, and in reality, Russia is a, it's a country it has its own interests, just like others. And and this is very popular popular idea, of course, in, in Russia. You know, we have we have our interests, and uh, others. Uh, you know, the West follows its interests, and and we're in conflict. Uh, and so the, the, there's the realist, the, the realist school. Uh, Mearsheimer, of course, is the uh, the big advocate of this now. That you know the the West is is pushed one way. They're uh, trying to expand NATO, and and uh, and and Russia is just pushing back. It, it's a it's a country like others. Uh, so that, that's one concept. But but against that is uh, this idea that no, the Russia, you know, the Sobiput. There's a particular Russia has a particular path is a different kind of different kind of uh, country that, that's more eastern that it's its pathways with uh, Eurasia and, and that it's it should it should be something different different from the west we we know how large is or how big is Russia you know as a country and many students they ask how is the power distributed between Moscow or Kremlin as a capital city and regions Oh, that, well, it's a, it's a huge uh, topic. Central again, central to Russian history. Uh, in modern times, in Putin's time, of course, uh, the Soviet Union was was uh, was becoming more regional. There are these regional powers. Uh, so, uh, of course, Uzbekistan. Uh, there is Rashidov. Uh, Famous uh, cotton, uh, I don't know, the, in, in Russia, you know, they, they make it more lurid, cotton mafia, although it was, it was uh, Rashidov is now, he, he's actually, he's regarded as a hero in Uzbekistan. You know, they were, they were just, uh, they were making cotton for profit, but of course that was, that was criminalized. Uh, and he was definitely, it was, a, it was a kind of uh, separate ethnic, uh, ethnic um, polity that the Soviets had less and less control of. Uh, and you know, under Andropov, that was that was a huge campaign. That was what Putin saw is, you know, this you've got to be careful with these things. Uh, and then uh, when when Putin came to power, uh, that's uh, you know that that's that's part that's basically explains Putinism was fighting, uh, uh, trying to control, come under control elites. So uh, you know, one one the main region uh, I know that one very well is. Uh, was Moscow? We had Lushkov. He was he was uh, with his uh, wife. Uh, she's still around. Yelena Baturina. They, they were they were the they were the heads, the chiefs of uh, Moscow. It was a separate separate uh, you know separate world. You, you had to. Uh, I, you wanted a little anecdote. I, I can remember. You know, I, was, I wanted research permission to stay in Russia, and you could be you could be arrested. I was I was detained, you know, for overstaying my four days. Even though I had a, a Russian, you know, the 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 visa, the Russian visa, I wasn't supposed to be in Moscow. 
And, uh, you know, and many friends, they're also, they're Russian, ethnic Russians. They'd be, they'd be, you'd be four days past your, past your, uh, you know, your stay and you'd, you'd be detained. It was like a separate, separate place. Mosque, you, you really feel it. You go there and you feel, you know, this is a separate, it's not really like Russia. It's like a different place. Right. Uh, and, and uh, you know, so that, that was, uh, that was Putin part of his, uh, you know, part of his, uh, one of his main drive was was getting Lushkov, getting that system under control, replacing him gradually. You know, his calculated campaign that was uh, uh, it's kind of like this hybrid war, a lot like uh, a lot like the hybrid war against Ukraine. You saw the hybrid war against uh, against Moscow, where you saw first these uh, you know concocted corruption scandals and and uh, they control the press. You know, they leak some things about. How the uh, there's an nepotism and whatnot, uh, and they gradually chipped away at Lushkov his economic power with his wife, you know, taking away the intech, taking away the uh, taking away her company, you know, step by step, and, and uh, you know, eventually they they were able to dethrone uh, Lushkov and Sabianin now is so, uh, you know the May he he's basically Sabianin's like a new Lushkov, but he's he's loyal, he's, he has a personal loyalty, a dependence on Putin. Same thing. If you go, I mean, you can go city by city. That's where I, uh, that's where I lived was St. Petersburg, and there, you know, it was it was it was uh, it was very clear. There was Yakovlev, was the mayor, and then you had these uh, criminal authorities, the the so-called night mayors, the criminal authorities, and and they were the ones that ran the city. And it was uh, you know, I lived there. I mean, you could you, you could see it. There were the casinos. There were the prostitutes. It was all, uh, you know, very, very uh, controlled, right? Separate, separate place, and and you had these bosses who, who ran things. And Putin, he grabbed. That was one of the first things I remember. That when he came, when he came to power, those casinos were gone. That was one of the first things he uh, he he did. Is got rid of those casinos, and and then you saw the last, the, the prostitute, the prostitutes. They're all, you know, just they're all they're everywhere. It's very organized. Uh, and, and they disappear. That's one reason why you know why, why people you know Russians they like him. He got rid of the you know the the these kingpins, mafia kingpins, and installed uh, Matvienka, right? Again, a, lo- a loyalist in as uh, as mayor. And uh, you know you can of course Chechnya. There, there's the big one where he uh, a very interesting case where you know he he ruthlessly eliminated. These, uh, you know, these these warlords, uh, independent. I don't know if you, it depends on your perspective. Independence fighters, and then Kadyrov. He's, uh, you know, he he uh, Kadyrov. He's he's like a, uh, I don't know, sheikh, and who, uh, you know, he ha- he has this uh, complete control over the area. He has. Some people say that you know the the one who won the Chechen war wasn't Russia. It was Chechnya, uh, and, and we see we see this on the news all the time. We see. Uh, Kadyrov, he's offered as a kind of model for Ukraine, where well, you know, well, uh, you know, well, Russia will win, but these local bosses they'll have, they'll have more authority, though, though people' life will be good. Now, of course, uh, you know, Chechnya, a lot of money flows into Chechnya from from the rest of Russia that's, that's subsidized, and and they show every night, every night in the Russian news, national Russian news, they show you know the new school being built, the new university, the uh in, in Chechnya. So he 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 uh co-ops these elites, uh he replaces them and he puts uh you know put puts people he can trust in uh in power. And you can go Nazratenka and in uh you know in the far east uh, yeah had this this fish mafia these people were replaced uh, for Gal the the for Gal uh you know he was very popular for Gal still for the popular guys in prison and they, you know, gradually replaced with these, uh, you know, Putin loyalists. Chris, do you think that this uh, this style or design of power distribution might also cause that one or two regions might say, mm, "That's enough. We want to be like independent. We, we want to be separated from Russia." Do you think that this is even possible, or Putin is in so much control? That this is not the case. Uh, my my opinion. So this is controversial. My my opinion 
is that it is impossible, uh, or I mean, it, it's it's very unlikely. So of course, uh, during during the war, the uh, United States has been pushing this, uh, you know, the so-called decolonization uh, movement, uh, and we have uh, Lev Panamarov. Uh, he's leading these uh, kind of uh, I don't know, very, very strange people, these kind of neo-fascists. Uh, they've, they've uh, you know, kind of made beachheads in, in parts of Russia. Uh, but but in my opinion, it, 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 this movement has, has actually made Putin more popular and has made colonization even less likely because people are people scared. They say, well, you know, we're, we're better off with the, what we have than, than some kind of chaos. Uh, that, that's just... Uh, that that's universal for, for I don't want to say you know not ethnic but a Russian speaker that's they they, they fear they fear the this uh, the house chaos they, that's they don't they don't want they want they want stability uh, that's a kind of universal thing I I do, I do not see uh, I do not see any uh, any any kind of independence movement I, uh, it's it's hard to see that. Right. You mentioned right. many names, but uh, we want to mention also Putin's family and the governments, <laughs> because I think this is one of your, you know, research area. And yes. it's it's not something that we know a lot about, except few articles. Among those articles, there is your article that I read, which is fascinating. So can you please elaborate on this topic? Uh, what role does the Putin family play? In the governments. Well, first, uh, first we have to look at Putin. Uh, as we 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 started, we talked about Russian traditions. Uh, there's just to, to 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 make the economy work, to do contracts. You need you need uh, you know you need you need some kind of head. You need some kind of head. Some some someone to guarantee. There's no courts. There's no courts. There's no uh, there's no real law. I can't I can't defend my property. In the end, it, 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 it's it's Putin who guarantees these things, guarantees these contracts, these agreements between the the we talked about the regions, between the regions, between the powers, between the different companies, uh, and, and these things are all unwritten. It's not like uh, you know the well you know Putin can leave and we'll have that that was tried. We have Putin and now we'll have Medvedev, right? But the problem is, well, what do you do with Kadyrov? What do you do with these regional regional elites? What do you do with these companies? Uh, you know, there's there's still the oligarchs. There's still the oligarchs from uh, the Yeltsin years, and and it's all these oral uh, info. Some of there's oral agreements, and there's some that are just panyati. They just they understand, you know, what what they're supposed to do. And Putin's there. He, he kind of keeps keeps the peace. Pater familias. He's kind of this uh, this uh, you know key key figure, key institute that keeps the peace among among the the regional elites and the families and the big businesses uh but the problem of course is uh, you know putin he he's he, as he ages as he ages people people will start to wonder uh, again this is part of the war you know that there there was uh there were of course threats on uh, putin's life uh we threw dr drones into the kremlin uh and, and this idea is well you know putin then putin goes then we could have uh, you know complete that house chaos chaos the Russian sphere, and so uh, there has to be some someone to take over. But again, who 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 is going to be trusted? Again, to go back to the beginning, we have uh, you know politics, economics, the military. No, there's no figure. Putin makes sure of this. There's no figure that that can span these different areas. There's political elites. There, there's there's uh, economic elites. There's military people. There's the FSB, right? The the uh, security elites, but there's there's no there's no one that can unify these groups. Only Putin can do that. And uh, yeah, I, I you know Medvedev, um, Shustin, these other figures, the so-called prime minister, they 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 can't. They can't. It would be if Putin died. If Putin, they, they, sometimes he goes to the hospital. We know that he he ruined he uh, hurt his back was, uh, two years ago, and and uh, you know he went in retreat. There has to be someone to replace him, and and so you know there has to be there has to be family members. They're, they're going to look towards a family person. That you can't you can't really in the system you can't have open elections. There's I, 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 it's just again it's like China or, or, or North Korea a lot like North Korea. 
where uh, yeah, that's you have to. It's the way the system works. You're going to have to have a Putin member inherit, and gradually, perhaps gradually, I think we're seeing this take over his position. Uh, that's one, and then also, of course, during the uh, what we had COVID, where Putin was isolated, he was scared to go out. He needs people that can that can uh, go and 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 uh, work with these elites, work with the say a Kadira, uh, work with the regional elites one on one. Without he knows he's being monitored. He knows that, you know the West they're trying to listen to what he says. He can't he can't he can't you know right can't call someone up. He has to he depends on on these one on one things. You know it's kind of more like medieval times, right? Uh, and so he he has to have family members. Uh, do this, and, and we're 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 slowly we're seeing this. We get hints of it more and more. Uh, of course, uh, uh, probably his wife Alina Kabayeva, uh, gymnast. Uh, you know, she she's she's taking assuming more and more of a role, uh, which is a media. You know, doing media, uh, media conglomerate. Uh, so so we see her, and then we see uh, Putin's daughters. Uh, you know they're they're doing more and more of these investments. Skolka, the Skolkova, uh, which was it was supposed to be the Russian Silicon Valley. Uh, that that's uh, that seems to kind of folded up, and it seems like Putin's daughters. Uh, uh, there's more and more evidence that they're they're deciding these these key investments and things. Uh, and then you know there, there's just there's a lot of cousin. It, it's very hard to research, of course. Uh, people don't want to talk about it, but there, there's there's a lot of cousins and second cousins, and uh, you know they have different different family names. But we we know they're they're part of the, the extended Putin family, uh, and they're 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 assuming more more and more of a role, governance role. I I, I think I think we'll see uh, we'll see some kind of like dyna- dynastic transition. Do you think that Putin might be also inspired by the? The past of Russia, you know, when you have the, for instance, Romanovs, you know, the family that ruled Russia, and and that's yeah. it, you know. So, do you think that he also thinks about that sort of, let's say, parallels? Oh well, we know we know he does. That we know he does. There, there's there's plenty of evidence. Uh, of course, I I I, I, uh, I lived in Saint Petersburg. And they're walking around. I live very close. I live right where a Bosco, you know, the, this Bosco Lane, where where Putin lived. And there, I mean, you you see you see the past all around you, the Hermitage and and the monuments and all these things are are, are around you every day. You see you see them every day. And uh, of course, uh, Putin, he must have when he when he grew up, he must have seen these these Soviet traditions decaying. Uh, and, and, and yet, you know, right in front of him, this, these huge castles and, and palaces and, you know, just, it's just stunning. It's beautiful. St. Petersburg is beautiful. And, and, uh, you know, we, we know he hates, uh, we, you know, anytime he brings up Lenin, he just, he, you can see he hates a visceral hatred of, uh, of, uh, Lenin, of, of this, like he said, Lenin, he put the mine under Russia, and he yeah he views uh, the Bolsheviks as as traitors, uh, and he, he's definitely he looks to the Tsar's past, yeah, and and uh, you know around him we we see uh, Sechin, Narishkin, Shuvalov, even the names there, it, it's like the you know recreating the, the recreating the past. If we see we see not only the the Kremlin the Kremlin uh, surroundings with the throne, you know he meets meets in these uh, throne rooms. Uh, but in his personal residences, you know, from these leaked uh, videos, we see he's recreated these, uh, you know, these mansions. You know, he wants to live like the czars for sure. There is also one question from students, uh, Chris, and yes. maybe maybe you remember when Yeltsin was in power, there was uh, sort of like terminology "war of Zakonia." You know the yeah, mafia, Zaconia, the, yeah. the, the yes. mafia people. What, what is happening with those families that were? Like members of of that sort of mafia movement nowadays, like are they still in some power, or mostly they, you know, were, were disintegrated or they move abroad, or how is it? Because we know that during the Yeltsin War of Zakonia, that was like, yeah. you know, like if That's you, very if, you, if, you yes. if you wanted something, you must you you had to know someone from that circles, otherwise, yeah, Ivan Kolov, yeah, 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 
Yeah. yeah. So how, how how is it now, and and what's your what's your perspective on that topic? Uh, well, again, I you know I, I saw I remember when you know as a student uh, you know you'd see these mafia people and you know they'd carry the guns and it was it wasn't just like some movie actually you'd you'd see this you'd see these figures uh, and now now there's definitely there's there's less of them for sure there's less and you know the big one the of you know these big Ivan Kolf you know the, the so called the little, little uh, say little little Japanese. Uh, you know, the, uh, that was his nickname. Uh, the, the dead cousin. Uh, they, they've uh, they passed away, or you know, the, they've disappeared. Um, and so, uh, yeah, the, these mafia figures have gradually retreated in the past. But uh, and this is more speculation. Uh, you know, the of course they, they were connected with with the uh, with the with the KGB with the FSB. You know, Vorv Zakoni. Who who gave them who gave them the law? Who was regulating them? Of course, they worked hand in hand with with the with the with the prisons. It started with the prisons, uh, the prison bosses to keep the order uh, at the at these horrible uh, these horrible uh, you know islands, uh, deserted islands. You you had to have you had to have the Vorzakoni. You had to have some chieftain keep keep the peace, and they, they were needed people. Uh, again, it, you know, it's speculative. We we know Solzhenitsyn. He talked about like the the drug trade. You can see Gorky Park, Gorky Park, mm -hmm. uh, American movie, uh, with the with the um, uh, with with the Soviet, uh, you know, the, the the Soviet police and the mafia that, that was there. Dmitry Symes, that's how he uh, uh, kind of notorious uh, notorious figure. Dmitry Symes, his first articles are very good about talking about the the Soviet mafias. Uh, and so we saw that, you know, these Vorv Zakoni, a lot of them, you know, they aged, they died. Uh, but the, 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 the uh, you know, the FSB, they're still around. Uh, there was this, uh, it was called the Tri the Three, the Three Whales, uh, Three Whales uh, Furniture. Uh, and it sounds very strange. Like there's this furniture store, and there were some. Uh, this is this is 2004 to 2005. There were some. You know, they sold some some things. You know, to the West, and it seems you know like well, you know, no no big deal. Uh, but uh, th there's a lot of speculation who was involved. It might, perhaps Shagu, Shagu. Definitely these these family these powerful family members. We know for a fact some of them were involved in this. And and this is during Putin as he tried to in, investigate investigate this as Narish uh, uh, Patrushev Nikolai Patrushev was charged with investigating, and uh, you know people people ended up just throughout the years people ended up these are the first poisonings the first poisonings happened uh, Yuri Shikhatikin, uh one of the prosecutors mm -hmm. he he was poisoned these are the, the mm -hmm. first poisonings and this thing, it, it's it's content you hear rumors. Uh, but but it's continued up to uh, up to uh, up to recent times. Uh, uh, the, these uh, the, these uh, you know kind of mafia uh, fights between the mafia clans and the FSB clans. Uh, it's all very murky, but w well, we know what's going on. We know what's going on. Uh, when we speak about power in Russia. We can't skip energy and energy resources of Russia. No. And uh, my question would be, how can we connect the power structure in Russia with energy resources, especially with those energy companies like Gazprom, Rosneft, Lukoy? What's your opinion about power and energy resources? Of course, uh, um, Putin, he, he derives his, his base from 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 the natural resources uh, that's uh, that, that's it, it it goes it goes back again these these uh, that's why it's just so important these russian traditions uh read Kluchevsky, the historian he writes about peter the great and uh Pasashkov, you know the the uh, economic thinker at that time he said the foreigners need us for our resources but we don't need the foreigners. We can, what we need to do is trade, you know, use our resources for strategic advantage and then borrow, borrow the technology to, to get a leap, a step ahead. The Western, they've already developed the technology. 
And so we can we can get ahead, right? We can get we can borrow that and, and get ahead. It's a very Russian idea. It goes back the centuries. And we see in Putin as he wrote, or maybe it was plagiarized, but his dissertation, that's what it was on, was uh, was this idea that we can use the state should take over the commanding heights, should control these resources and uh, and and use it to invest in uh, these these advanced technologies. You know, so so Russian can can make the leap forward. But of course, yeah, he uses uh, his Marshall Goldman. Uh, you know, we're the petro petro state. Uh, Russia definitely has a kind of resource curse, where uh, you know Putin, no matter how how corrupt, how uh, you know the, the, how how far things go, he he has he he you know he has this backstop. You know, he has he, the, the natural gas and the oil. Uh, you know, we're talking. Uh, there, there was talk about the fracking. Well, the fracking is going to happen. That definitely that Russia took a hit. Uh, they, they didn't invest enough in fracking uh, and then, you know, solar technology or the the, the car, the the uh, electric cars, uh, you know, that one, one, uh, there's always it seems like every year there's this idea that, uh, you know, we're going to move uh, move beyond oil and gas. But it never never seems to happen. Never. Uh, we're, still, we're still using oil and gas. Uh, we hear our, our president, uh, Trump, President Trump, he's saying, you uh, you know the electric cars don't work. Biden Bidenomics doesn't work. That's his every speech. I listen to his speeches, President Trump. Uh, and and he, every speech he says, you know, we need the oil and we need the uh, gas cars. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I gas uh, and na- natural gas uh, oil. It's it's going to be around still, uh, and that'll always give uh, Putin some kind of some kind of backstop. And he he's he's uh, since the beginning he's been very. Careful with Doyle uh, at um, at handing out these uh, you know the, these positions these positions. You know. There is there is one question that it's always sort of speculation, but but I like asking that question. When yes. you have those energy company bosses, you know, like Miller, Sachin, and yeah. all those people. Yeah, Miller, yeah, Sachin, yeah. Do they have power? to slightly change the government structure or the government has the power to slightly change the energy company structure oh that that's a that's a big one uh again uh th- this this goes back to this idea of privatization that th- these companies are going to be independent are going to stand up to the state uh, with state that th- they're going to stand up to the state and uh, you know they they tried to put in people who who would stand up to the state, Khodorkovsky, Yukus, uh, and, and this was this was going to be, you know at one time he was going to be you know the the kind of ruler de facto ruler of uh, of Russia, uh, but again this, we don't like uh, Richard Pipes and patrimonialism, but there you see it was it was it was very easy to uh, to to strip. To strip to strip Yukus and give it to Igor Sechin, it, it, it proved very easy. I, I was in Russia at the time. There, there was no that, that would have been crazy for someone to stand. You know, let, let's support Khodorkovsky. Just no, no one, uh, no, no one that 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 thought didn't enter anyone's mind. There was maybe a few people on on TV, the NTV. It was a TV station. It was kind of connected with Khodorkovsky. Uh, and, and there were some media figures, uh, but you know, and there was the West, but no one in, in Russia. There wasn't. There was no protest. It was just. It was, it was just, again. These are these are deep Russian traditions. They could take. This is the, the biggest company at the time, Yukus. They could take it, strip it down, and, and give it to Igor Sechin and and others, and without any. Um, you know, there the, the was with very very little protest. Uh, and and and, uh, and then of course we had uh, Sechin. There was a lot of rumors. You know, he's he's running Russia. He's the deep. Uh, you know, this is the deep mind. Of course, uh, Sechin was a. It was a guru. Was a military military intelligence. Uh, and and he definitely for sure he had some power. Uh, but again, we've seen uh, he's he's been sidelined. He's been sidelined. Uh, we we know we know he he came into conflict with Patrushev, uh, 
uh, they, they don't like one another. We know that, but uh, I don't, you know, Patrushev's or you know, running things and Sessions kind of, we we you don't see him much anymore. There's little indication that he he would be able to challenge them or stand up to the state or. Uh, he, I I think my guess is Session was against the war. Uh, Rosneft, you know, the the new Yukos uh, that, that that took a big hit. But I mean, you can. What could he do? You know? Basically, no. I don't. I don't see uh, an opportunity for these natural, uh, natural. Yeah, of course, Gazprom that's filled with. And there you go with. Um, there's a Mikhail Putin. Mikhail Putin, who's a um, who's a uh, cousin once removed uh, from from Vladimir Putin. He he's you know there's spec. He, he we, you can go on the site Mikhail Putin Gazprom. You can Google it. You can see him. He's right there. Uh, you know, he's definitely some kind of overseer at Gazprom. You know, he, again, it doesn't. I, I don't think it matters is what his title is. He's, but yeah, I mean, no one, no one's going to stand up to him. No one's going to stand up to the state. No one's going to stand up. You know, he, he, I'm sure he he can call the shots. I'm sure. Those who lived in Russia, um, those people know about those sort of hidden positions in the companies. Like also, I, when when I was in Russia, I also heard stories that there is some sort of department B20 or whatever it's called and there is zero output of the department but there is sitting a man who is in control yeah. yeah so so this is you know it's it's almost impossible to have this in the western companies when we have all those CEOs and you know strategies and those rich people meeting and it's it's much more transparent but in Russia you never know who is who or who is oh it's not it's not 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 easy. Oh, to... I, well, I always say it's a, it's a, you know I'm, I'm right now I'm in Los Angeles, my home. Uh, in Los Angeles, the the more powerful you are, the more famous you are. Yeah. Your power is your fame, and, and uh, you know is it these these fading uh, you know stars? They go crazy because they're they're not recognized. You know, they go out in the street. Sunset Boulevard is a famous movie. See these old, uh, you know, the, the, the stars from the talkies, and you know, no one cares about them anymore. They go crazy. You, you, your, your fame is your is your power. The more famous you are, the more powerful you are. Donald Trump, art of the deal. You got to be talked about. It doesn't matter if you're bad, bad way, good way. You got to be talked about. Where Russia, it, it's a complete. The less you're talked about, the less people know about you. The more powerful you are. You know, Timchenko. Timchenko, you know, he's a, he's a very powerful person. We, we know almost nothing about him. That was for years. Abramovich, he was smart. He was the smart one out of the, the original oligarchs in the 90s. We didn't, they didn't even have his picture. People didn't even know if he existed, Roman Abramovich. I remember what people, you know, taught, you'd hear this, oh, there's this Roman Abramovich, and no one no one knew, there was no picture, no one knew who he was. He just, you know, it's Berezovsky. He wanted to be the big guy, the fame, you know, Berezovsky's doing the godfather of the Kremlin. He's doing all this stuff. And, and he paid the price. He paid the price. You got you got to in Russia, you got to lay low. You got to lay low. And, and like, yeah, that's um, again, it goes back to Tsarist times. These these secret institutions, secret uh, government. Uh, it, it's there. Uh, one of my favorite books on Russia, uh, something I read over and over again, is that Hannah Arendt. If you don't like the so-called totalitarian model, but I think uh, Hannah Arendt, uh, totalitarianism and power. She talked about this, uh, this these, these secret, this, this government within a government. Now, that was her, her th one of her thesis. Uh, part of her thesis was that the Nazis and the communists they 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 copied the Freemasons. They loved that the Freemason idea. Uh, and and uh, it, it, it's, there's there's quite a bit of that when you're in Russia and you, you can't you can't mistake it. There there are all these uh, people that don't exist and and uh, you know, rooms that don't exist and things that you know. That, yeah, right. Prigozhin, there you go. Prigozhin, you know, the, ran some restaurant and you know, and he's he's running an army. And, yeah, I, I I think it's it's fascinating, you know, to research those things because, I mean, they contribute to different perspective of how we understand Russia. But let's now connect a few more elements, uh, mainly the Russian foreign policy and mm -hmm. power structure. 
what implications can you see and how could we connect uh, the Russian foreign policy? Who is basically in power of the Russian foreign policy? We know like two names, Sergei Lavrov, who is the Minister mm-hmm. of Foreign Affairs. We know Maria Zakharova, who is a spokesperson Arpia. in Russia. So from these two, we hear like 99% of information comes from these two, you know. But what's behind? How how can we connect foreign policy and power in Russia? Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, again, uh, yeah, the, you have to be careful with the, the spokespeople. You know, Peskov, uh, Zaharova. You know, she she's on the news all the time. She's a very uh, flamboyant figure. Uh, even Lavrov. It's not clear. Uh, how much how much power influence they have? Uh, we we saw this, of course. A good test was the the, the war. Uh, this is in fe- uh, February. Uh, apparently, they they all thought that uh, you know that the the war would there would be no war. It was all uh, all uh, figment of the Western imagination. Uh, yeah, and and they, they see we can see like Narishkin. Who's supposed to be the spy chief? You, you could see it, it, when it was announced there's going to be this war. You could actually see his face. He was surprised and they had no idea that it was going to happen. Uh, we, we, the, the, it's very mur- Putin. He knows uh, you know that there's dangers. He knows there's assassinations. Uh, he knows that to, to, to keep power, he has to he has to keep things secret. Um, and, and so, yeah, it's, it's very murky, uh, who, who actually, who actually calls the shots, uh, you know, the, there's rumors, uh, of course, Patrushev has, it has a big influence, uh, but it, it, it's not more than rumors. I, I don't think Putin, he, he doesn't, uh, he's not going to let someone outside of his family, he's not going to let someone have to have too much, uh, have too much leverage. And I, 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 for sure, I get. We saw the uh, another example. We saw the the so-called negotiations, the peace negotiations, and uh, this would have been in April. It was Medinsky, you know, the historian, the cultural historian Medinsky, who's uh, he, he's he's a kind of notorious figure in uh, Russia and in Russian academia. He writes about you know these kind of pop things, pop history. He, he's he's uh, you know kind of lo- he's looked down on. Uh, and, and they had him as the lead negotiator. You know, it, it was like a joke. Of course, he had no, he had no authority, no power. Uh, it, w- it was clear there's not going to be any real negotiation with him. He, had, he has no leverage. Lavrov, we, we know he he is involved in these secret. Uh, and they're not. If we know about them, I guess they're not secret. Uh, we know he's he's been involved in these secret, uh, you know, back channel. Negotiations. He's flown out to Washington D.C. Covers it up, but you know, flown out to Washington D.C. and uh, you know, met with uh, some, some you know, again these back channel type people. Uh, but I don't know, so so far, it hasn't uh, that hasn't seemed to accomplish much. Uh, there's Dmitry Symes, you know, again uh, the, this uh, kind of notorious figure, back channel figure from from the Nixon years. Uh, we we see he, he's still he's still uh, you know again this is from the 1970s when he was doing the Soviet back channels he's still he's still he's still there uh, they're still counting on him to convey some kind of message or something uh, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah I, I the people calling the shots they're they're in the back uh. Chris what's about yeah. Russian population and the power does Russian population have any power. I, I've lived in Russia many years, uh, and it was always, uh, always uh, that was my, the biggest problem. Is uh, you know most Russians they just they they want to get by. They don't think they have power, and and, uh, and so they don't. And uh, you know I I always I never liked Putin. Everyone you know knew me. I was kind of notorious for for speaking out. I, I never I never got at the time in the ninety in, in the late nineties, uh, you know, the two thousands, you you could still you could still speak your mind. You'd still speak your mind. I, I remember, you know, I'd be at you know the conferencia, the conference and uh, you know, have the toast and I'd say, you know, I like I don't think that Russia's going the way it should go. And and uh, you know, people just you know, it's crazy Chris. Uh, you know, they they, they went uh they wouldn't uh, support, but you you could you could speak your mind. 
you could. Just not enough people did. No, the Russian people, they do have, uh, we have to believe it, they do have power. They could, they could, uh, but they, they could, but, you know, for, again, it's culture. Uh, they don't. Uh, I, I, have, I have very little uh, expectation that the Russian people will, will stand up and, uh, and protest. But we, we haven't seen, we don't see any, we haven't seen any massive, pro- it's amazing, any massive protests. We've gone through a lot, but we, ha- we, haven't, re- we haven't seen one big street pro- protest. If if people protested, they, they could. Uh, they, they, the people. I mean, Putin. He's he's one one person. If people around him, I, I don't think. I my my. I think that there's there's Putin. There's his family, extended family. Other than that, I mean, the, the people around. I don't. I'm not sure even how much they even like him. Uh, it, 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 they used to say authority authoritarianism without authority. Uh, of he has he has uh, he has very limited means to enforce things. He couldn't just you know go in and if there's a big protest in uh, you know the, the Moscow, he, he has limited means to uh, you know just go and arrest people. Especially now, we saw again with Prigozhin. That's ama- amazing when you want you can see or or Rostov Prigozhin. He has a big army. It's completely unopposed. Just marches up to. Apparently, he could have gotten to Moscow pretty easily. He decided himself to turn away, but he could, he could have done it. It, it just shows. Uh, oh, we see uh, for Gal there, there were the. Uh, this is in the Far East, Habarovsk. There were protests. Uh, the, the population, the, the police, they, they they have very limited power, limited authority. Again, when when you go to Russia, that that's uh, that's a, that's the thing that that strikes you is just how little. Uh, how little police policing there is it's there's the cities right there's the cities where where you're under watch but once you leave that once you you leave just a, you know a kilometer outside of st petersburg and you're on your own there's i mean there's just nothing there's no police you go to the village you go to my wife's village i mean there, there's no there's not there's no police there's no cameras there's no there's no limited electricity there's limited phone you're, i mean you're just out there just out there yeah, the, no, the people, uh, the, the people could could protest. Uh, it's just uh, again, mm-hmm. Russian traditions. They don't. Uh, they they don't. They don't. They won't. They won't. I think I think the the structure of power and and power general is a quite good avenue how to research Russia, and I know that you were researching Russia also in Russia, and now you are researching Russia outside of Russia. Yeah. Um, well, can we speak a little bit about how to approach research? Well, that, that's a great question. I hate hate to give advice, but uh, uh, well, the one uh, I, I guess I I watch the Russian news every day. People complain, uh, you know. Some sometimes you get carried away. Sometimes it gets in your head. Uh, but I'm a big believer. Just as watching the Russian news, just, uh, uh, consistently every day. And after a while, you you get you pick up. So you know, here's here's you know what they're trying to hide. Uh, you know, yeah, read read books by magicians. You know what what you always got to focus on what what they're trying to push your attention to and what they're trying to keep you away from. Uh, uh, so yeah, the, the the Russian news every day. Uh, but uh, you know, moving from this is more advanced students, uh, especially these days. Uh, you know, the, in the West, there's just uh, uh, there, there's there's a lot of Western propaganda. Uh, so, some I agree with. There's, there's things that there's things that I agree with. I think I think the war in uh, America should support Ukraine and, and the war for sure. Uh, but but there's a lot of uh, you know mis- American based misinformation. And uh, one of my be- one of the the best advice I could give is to find someone uh, that you strongly disagree with. You strongly this is completely wrong, but you respect. You think this is a, this is a real expert. This is someone who really knows Russia backwards and forwards. But I, I disagree with them. Uh, and, and so I, I have many friends and colleagues like that that I, I, I disagree with, but I but I still I listen to. I learn from. Uh, it's just so important right now uh, uh, to 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 listen to different different views. Uh, I, I, during the during the, we had the Cold War, 
uh, where where he had uh, you know the you had McCarthyism, you had the Red Scare, you had the FBI, and yet you, you know you read it, you, you had uh, uh, Stephen Cohen and Richard Pipes. They they had uh, they strongly disagreed, and yet they had very productive debates. It's interesting, like mm-hmm. you, you you know they they, they talk uh, and and uh, you know first they did polar opposites, but at the end they'd agree about most things. You know what what's going on. Uh, that, that we need to bring, we need to bring back these discussions. So yeah, to, uh, follow someone you dis- disagree with, someone who, who's who, who, who's an expert you think is an ex- someone you respect. You know, don't just like Tucker Carl. I'll, I'll listen to Tucker Car- Carlson and and, and uh, you know I disagree with them. And you know, of course, it's just, uh, it's just kinda a it's just kind of waste of time. Uh, where where find someone you think is a real good expert, knows stuff. You know, I could. I wish I could. You know, be like this person, and and, and follow them, try to get in contact with them, debate them. The American support for Ukraine. Uh, what do you think about it, and what do you think will happen in the near future when it comes to that help? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm very worried. I'm worried uh, that the uh, American support is uh, is is dissipating. It's become politicized. It's become politicized, and and my strong view, again, is that uh, we didn't we didn't have uh, uh, these Russian experts, especially Russian experts with different opinions, involved in the debate. 2000, uh, 2000, 2022, 23, uh, we we didn't have enough uh, debate, enough experts involved. We had a lot of uh, boiler boiler. Late, uh, you know, slogans and uh, you know that uh, Ukraine is gonna, you know, storm take over Crimea and uh, we're gonna decolonize Russia. Uh, these these are slogans. They're not they're not achievable. Uh, and and you know, I, I remember uh, you could read the New York Times, and it, you, it was very strange things about you know the, the one Ukrainian victory after another. Uh, where I'd watch the Russian news uh, that was all, you know, propaganda and control. And, and yet the Russian news for, unfortunately, 2023, for much of the year, the Russian news was more accurate than New York Times. They, they were telling the truth. The true situation was very grim. It's horrible. Uh, where uh, where uh, the American news was kind of, you know, covering things up. Uh, of course, you know, with our tanks, they, they were very reluctant to show the Russians blowing up uh, uh, German tanks, American tanks, uh, but but that that happened. Unfortunately, that happened. Uh, and so, you know, you you could uh, the Russian, you know, Russian people who know Russia, they could they could watch the Russia, and you, and you're like, even for me, you're like, well, you know, the Russia, they're, they're telling the truth, they're telling the truth. It's, it's very convincing, uh, and and that gave an opening. To uh, to a Tucker Carlson or Glenn Greenwald, uh, you know the the, the, the lobby, the, the, the people that had it had a different view uh, uh, that, that gave an opening to them, uh, and and now you know this uh, they're the ones that, they're the ones that are believed. You know, I I I just I don't think mainstream Americans believe. I read the New York Times every day. I love the New York Times, uh, but I don't think uh, most Americans they they believe in. Uh, I think I think I think the outlets like New York Times, Washington, they shot them Washington Post. Uh, they shot themselves in the foot. Uh, they should should have been more forthcoming. There should have been more debate. They should have realized that. Uh, or, or right now we're talking about uh, uh, we're talking about how there should be a, a truce in Ukraine. How the, how there's a stalemate. And for years, uh, for for two years, you couldn't even you couldn't mention that. There could be no. Uh, there'd be no mention of any kind of stalemate, and now suddenly there can be the, 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 the that's what's happening is a stalemate, uh, and so uh, you know they 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 lost a lot of credibility, they lost a lot of credibility, and they gave an opening to uh, these these skeptics. So a lot are just kind of crazy people, in my view, uh, but they gave an opening to them, and now uh, you know people people are uh, people are very skeptical. People are very skeptical, and, and then uh, you know, even for me, it's very hard to see what is the strategy. What 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 are what 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 are we going to do? There's no clear. Uh, there's no there's no clear strategy. There's no clear strategy, and then, of course, in American history. We you know we've had we've had Vietnam, uh, we had Iraq, uh, we have Afghanistan, uh, where uh, you know there there were some military 
accomplishments and then there was no long-term strategy and, and so many americans they're they're very cynical they're very cynical. i know many veterans they're they're very cynical they're very cynical of uh, what's going on it's hard it's hard to blame them so uh yeah unfortunately um it, it's going to be very hard to it's going to be very hard to have america um the american public commit it's possible. It's still mm-hmm. possible. I hope. I hope. I hope. Uh, I hope that will happen. But it's going to be very difficult. And of course, now we have Donald Trump coming up. So, <laughs> the last question for today's interview, Chris. When we were speaking about the power, power structures in Russia, what can we say about Russia during the war and Russian power? What's the what's the impact of the, for instance, war in Ukraine on Russian power? Well, that's uh, uh, that's that's the big question. Uh, we're, we're talking about how important Russian traditions are, and uh, looking at Russian history, looking at different scholarship. But uh, you know, we're we're seeing something that's it's completely unprecedented. During my, I, I, not only me, I, I, I think I know Russia pretty well. I lived there many years. I've just, I, it's something I've never never seen i've never seen and you hear more and more i remember there's this uh, i like him mikhail svetov he's a uh, libertarian russian young guy you know he's very popular young people russian libertarian and i remember him saying this is this is nothing like i've ever seen in my lifetime it's something just just different i've never never seen it uh and so it, it's going to it's going to be very hard to hard to uh hard to predict uh but we know we know that there's a considerable amount of there's veterans. Uh, they're they're going to have to uh, they're going to have to have find jobs. Uh, we we saw this through World War II. That was a huge thing. A lot of the so-called anti-cosmopolitanism. This was it was simply uh, veterans, often you know Slavic people, Russian people, ethnic Russians who who needed job. They weren't very educated, peasant boy. They fought. They're hero. They came back and, you know, you, you got to make them happy. You don't want Stalin. You knew they can't have protests. And so you have oh, and a, and a cosmopolitan, the cosmopolitans, often the Jews, they, they have to leave their uh, leave their position and we'll put a veteran in their place. Um, I saw that where I studied, St. Petersburg University. We had the older, older professors, you know, the, the medals. No, that was them. Uh, you know, they, they, they unfortunately they'd written, um, you know, the the Donos, you know, the the thing, and the letters against against these cosmopolitans, and then they they become professors, uh, and and that radically shaped uh, late Soviet history. Uh, we 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 could. My prediction, my prediction will be we'll, we'll see something like that with the, these veterans taking up uh, you know more and more and more of a role. Well, we see that we see it during uh, Putin his re-election. You know, the, it was uh, Artyom Joga. He's a, uh, uh, a Donetsk, is, uh, you know, uh, again, when his family, uh, his father was a was a so-called hero of Donetsk. Uh, and he's he's the one, you know, asked Putin, can I can I can I run? Right. Can I run? Yeah, can you run, Mr. Putin? Can you run for president? Please run for president. And then the next one was, you know, the mothers of the the mothers, of the veterans. The police. Can you run? It wasn't wasn't a. Uh, it wasn't a political figure, economic figure. You know that, that it was the veterans. So they're going to have more and more of a role, and we're seeing we're seeing this on the news all the time. It's uh, these vet they're going to they have more and more of a voice. Uh, I, I I think a lot of these these politicians, uh, uh, the, the, like uh, the Patrushevs, uh, Narishkins, uh, you know the, these princeling, uh, these princelings, Dmitry Patrushev. I, I think I, I think their prospects are low. They, they haven't. If you haven't fought in the war, you didn't even go to the front. Turchak, Andrei Turchak. You know, the, uh, the, 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 I, I, I think their their prospects are, are bleak. Uh, uh, I, I think we're going to see uh, uh, some some big change if you if you didn't if you didn't fight if you weren't properly supporting the war uh, I think you're going to be in trouble. Uh, it could it, we could see that we're already seeing kind of like a '90s situation where uh, these elites these older a lot are aging a lot are old accession you know he's just he's he's old he doesn't look well I, I think we're going to see some replacements you know but but a veteran. Rosneft the veterans Rosneft you know. Right, Chris, thank you very much for your insightful thoughts and remarks. 
And uh, it was a pleasure to, to speak with you about uh, power in Russia because of your research, your experience. And uh, I think you have sort of enthusiasm, you know, to to know more, to research more. So I wish you lots of energy to your work, to your research, and good luck with all the publications that you are working on. And I think, you know, we can repeat this talk maybe in one year and we'll see how the power in Russia is going to look like. Thank you for being on IR Thinker. Thank you. Thank you for all the great questions. Thank you for having me. See you next time.